Continuing where we left off from section 3.1, here in 3.2 we're going to be looking at the properties of parallel lines and using much of the same vocabulary as we had before. So we're going to begin with postulate 3.1, which is same side interior angles. Now this postulate states that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So what this means is that angles 3 and 6 will be supplementary of one another. They will add up to 180 degrees, as will angles 4 and 5. So based on this little bit of information, what can we conclude which angles are supplementary to angle 3? Let's take a look. So if I take angle 3 here and circle it so it's more noticeable, what is interior, or sorry, what is supplementary to that? Well, according to previous postulates we've had, any set of linear pair are automatically supplementary. So that means that angle 4 would be supplementary, because 3 and 4 make a linear pair. Angle 2 would be supplementary, because it also makes a linear pair. Well, based on postulate 3, 1, we can now also conclude that angle 6 is supplementary because it is a same side interior angle and since angle 6 and angle 8 are vertical angles angle 8 would be supplementary as well so we have four angles that are supplementary to angle 3 and as we go through and work with parallel lines, we're going to find a lot of relationships correspond to one another and help the simplification process of finding angle values. So what other items do we have when we start looking at parallel lines and their transverse? We're going to look now at theorems 3.1 and 3.2. Now reminder, theorems are basically well-established theories. In mathematics, we rarely come out and say that things are definitely the way they are. We always leave the possibility of there being an exception. So, theorem 3.1 is the alternate interior angle theorem. And this one specifically states that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. And the way this one will be developed is from what we just worked, angles 3 and 6 are supplementary. Well, based on linear pairs, 5 and 6 are supplementary. So if we get rid of angle 6, then 3 and 5 would have to be congruent to one another because both are supplements of 6. Using the same logic, we could say that 4 and 6 are congruent to one another based on supplementary sets. Next up is the corresponding angle theorem. This is theorem 3-2. Now this theorem states if a transversal intersects two parallel lines then corresponding angles are congruent. Well just as we had previously established because 2 and 3 were a linear pair and were supplementary the uh, same side interior angle postulate tells us that 3 and 6 are supplementary. Get rid of angle 3 and 2 and 6 would have to be congruent to another. And following that logic we could go with the others. Now, how can we prove, given that line A is parallel to line B, that angle 1 and angle 8 are supplementary? The way this proof is going to develop is as follows. That A is parallel to B, and that's a given fact. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that is by supplementary pairs. Next, because 2 and 6 are corresponding angles, they are congruent. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, and that is 
corresponding pairs or our corresponding angles theorem. Next, we can say that angle 6 is congruent to ang or sorry, not congruent, but supplementary. So, we'll say angle 6 and angle 5 are supplementary by supplementary pairs. Angle 5 and angle 8 are supplementary pairs. And here this should be and, not congruent. Next, using transitive property, we can say that angle 1 and angle 8 are supplementary and that is by the transitive property. Saying that if we get rid of things that are in the middle and eliminate things that are the same, we can get there. We could also have shortened this up a bit simply by going from angles 1 and 5 being congruent by corresponding angles. 5 and 8 are supplementary, therefore 1 and 8 would be supplementary to each other. So a couple of different ways of going about this proof, some a little bit longer than others, but always using the theorems and postulates that we had to begin with. Now that we've looked at these, we do have one more theorem to look at, and that is theorem 3.3. In theorem 3.3, we are working on an alternate exterior angle theorem. And this one states that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Sorry, alternate exterior angles are congruent. This should be exterior. So from this, let's see what we can find out here. If we know that the measure of angle 1 is 127 degrees, what will we be able to conclude? Let's begin by putting 127 degrees on here. Well, we know that angles 1 and 2 form a linear pair and are supplementary. So that means that angle 2 is 53 degrees. By the same reasoning, angle 4 is 57 degrees. And by linear pair, angle 3 would be 127 degrees. So that first quartet of angles are found values for simply off of 1. However, using our corresponding angles, we can say that angles 1 and 5 are congruent. So 5 is 127 degrees. 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. So 6 is 53 degrees. Also following either with linear pairs or talking about corresponding positions, angle 7 would be 127 degrees and angle 8 would be 53 degrees. So when you have a set of parallel lines and a transversal, if you know even one piece, you will be able to solve for all of the missing angles using corresponding positions, alternate interior and alternate exterior angle theorems, and linear pair sets. So a lot can be done with very little information as we move forward. So make sure you have these theorems down and are ready to use them because they will be used a lot throughout geometry.